Welcome to Gospel Greetings, practical encouragement for living out your faith in the marketplace. This week, we continue The Awe of God by John Bevere. Last week, we did Destructive Fear from 2 Timothy 1, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. A spirit of fear is destructive fear that draws us away from God. It makes us a slave to the thing we fear. But God reminds us that's not the kind of fear he gives us, but he gives us power, love, and a sound mind. This week, we continue with being revealed as we are from Leviticus 10.3. By those who come near me, I must be regarded as holy, and before all the people, I must be glorified. So we're going to discuss how the fear of the Lord reveals who we really are. Leviticus 10 is the account of how Aaron's sons offered strange fire before the Lord. And you'll remember that God's dwelling place on earth after the Exodus was the tabernacle. And while serving there, Nadab and Abihu, two sons of Aaron, offered strange or profane fire before the Lord. Both men then perished as a result of their actions. So Moses describes that they were burned up and then says in verse 3 that God must be regarded as holy. We see from this example that these men who purported to be God's holy priests actually treated Jehovah very casually. What boneheads, we may say, yet don't we do the same things? See, every th human being has three kinds of images. We have first, our perceived image, the way other people perceive us. Second, our projected image, the way we present ourselves to others. And third, our perfect image, or who we actually are in God's all-knowing eyes. Right now, like Aaron's sons, we may project a holy image, and others may perceive that image, but at the end of time, each one of us will be revealed as we really are. 1 Corinthians 4 says our secret thoughts and motives will be made known, and 2 Corinthians 5 says that we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. See, holy fear helps us keep our motives and intentions in check. The fear of the Lord helps us lean into our actual image rather than our projected image. When we hold God in the highest respect and ask him to search our heart, he helps us see how we were posing or projecting so we can repent and come back to the perfect image, the actual image of who we are in God's sight. Like the marriage book, Love and Respect by Egrich. He says, women need love and men need to be respected. So if we need respect, how much more should we respect our Lord? This awe of God is so important because you'll never find God in an atmosphere where he is not held in the utmost respect. Like Psalm 89 says, God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints. And Paul warned the Colossians that some imposters had self-imposed worship with an appearance of wisdom. Let us not pose and project before men and God, but in holy fear, ask God to search us and to purify our hearts. Let's pray. God, please give us a respect for you and help us live out of our perfect actual image of who we are in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen.